All right, we're talking about the Infineon line of XMC 4000 microcontrollers. So maybe you're getting a little tired of Arduino. You want to try something new. You want to try more of an industrial, professional kind of microcontroller. I've been getting into this one. We're going to go over the family, look at the different microcontrollers in it, uh, some of the demo boards, some of the web resources. Check out the Dave IDE, how to download it, set it up do a quick overview and we'll make a function generator as our demo project. The XMC family just kind of has these two categories. There's the 1000 and the 4000. The 1000 is a lot smaller, 16 to 64 pins, and it has mainly just a few um, digital outputs. You can do some stuff with that. We're going to focus on the 4000 because that has a lot more functionality than these guys up here are the tri-core, which are um, three cores. So this is a similar one if you need a lot more power. Um, I think the 4000 I decided was probably going to be overkill for most of the stuff I do, so I was going to focus on learning that. And these are all um, ARM-based microprocessors, 32-bit. Here is within the 4000 series, they have these 41, 42, 43, 44, 45, 47, and 4800 models, and they have a brief description. This is just from their website, the Infineon website. This 4142 is kind of the basic one, and this one is, I think, pretty good for power electronics type of stuff. If you want to do digital controls, they have a really high resolution A to D, D to A stuff on there that's real fast. And then these other ones have added functionality. These two have EtherCAT, which is sort of a real-time Ethernet thing for robotics automation type stuff. And then these guys here have uh, some things, SD cards, CAN buses, and that kind of stuff. So if you want to pick up uh, some of the demo boards, they have a whole bunch of different demo boards, but these are some of the common ones that aren't real expensive for each of the models. Uh, you probably you might want to just pick up one or two of these 1100s, even though they are not super capable because they're so cheap. And uh, here's one I got right here. It's super tiny. It's uh, kind of like a keychain. And then... The other one I picked up is this 4700 because it's the uh, next cheapest one. So that's the one that I'm going to be using today. But you can do this project that we're going to do on, I think, any of these. But um, what I've been looking at is this 4200. Um, I think I actually want to get a demo board of that because um, that one is what I want to use as sort of a standard thing for power electronics. So here's a few web resources. These are in the description. First is the Dave IDE. So that's a nice uh, free development environment that's Eclipse-based. It's pretty nice. So you want to start by downloading that. This microcontroller probe thing is something that they had a company develop for them that allows you to make sort of dashboards without doing direct programming of the microcontroller. And you can make different dials and things. Um, we're not going to go into that, but it's interesting. I tried it out. And then this is the example projects. So we're going to use that to do the function generator project today. That first link will bring you here. They make you put in a little information before you can access the download. And then you download the Dave software, which is pretty large. Uh, the only note I want to mention on that is when you're extracting the zip file, you have to move it to kind of your base C drive, like C colon backslash because I did it from my desktop and it has a lot of really long file paths and it gave me a bunch of errors. So I had to start it over a few times and I had to do that with a bunch of the files. So you probably just want to move all the zip files to your C drive and extract them there at first and then install them. Next, if you want to follow along here, you don't really need to do this, but if you come to the example projects and you type analog, this is the one here. The example demonstrates how to use the digital to analog controller app to generate an analog sign signal and a ramp. So this is what I use to learn how to do what I'm going to show you. Once you get Dave set up, it's going to look like this when you open it up. And I recommend one of the first things you do is go help, help contents, 
And then over here, you can check out Dave user's manual and getting started. And you probably want to read through this. I'll give you some of the uh, tips for getting started here and how, how this works. But uh, they go over all the different sections of it and what each one of them means and how to make a project. So it's kind of step by step. This right here is kind of the main deal you can check out, shows the different parts of it. But basically, this is your project. This is where your code and stuff goes. This is like your console and your app setups and that kind of stuff. And then this here is just your app tree, assuming you're using the app features. So I've already got some stuff set up here. You can see I already did the function generator, but let's make a new project and we'll start over. So you can do new Dave project. And then we're going to do Dave CE project here. There's different types of projects, empty project. Um, but this CE one is how you use the Dave apps. And we're just going to call this signal generator one. So now here you have to select which kit you're using. So the kit that I'm using is this 4700 relax kit. And that's about it. I think all this you can leave default and then finish. So here we are. It's done and we have a new project and it's active. So next thing we're going to do is add an app. So to add an app, you click on here, add new app. And we're going to type in here, DAC for digital to analog converter. And we're just going to get the first one here. Double click that and it's adding that to the project. So these um, apps are kind of like a pre-programmed set of configurations and code. So you don't have to go through and set all the registers and read the documentation and everything. So it's a uh, quick way to get started with some boilerplate stuff. So now that we have that, we can close this. And we have our app right here, DAC0, and right here. So we can double click on this. And this shows us, this is the clock app here. And this is the DAC app here. So we can decide what do we want. We're going to do a pattern generator. And our pattern is going to be a sine wave. So the pattern just has 32 buckets. And this has a preloaded sine wave. Um, in those buckets. So there's it's a sine wave made out of 32 points. So it's kind of jagged, but we're going to put it here at 50 kilohertz and we'll just leave these the same. So the amplitude is 1.1 volts and the offset is 1.4 volts. So let's check out what is going on over here in our project. We've got a bunch of stuff here. We've got some Dave generated stuff docs. We got the user's manual for the board we selected. We got some libraries. We have some startup and we have our main function. So if we double click that, this is just a blank main function. So it says here placeholder for your application code. There's nothing in here. So the app that we just made so far doesn't do anything. So the next step before we generate the app, we have to assign the pins. And that is up here in this green kind of thing with the T. So you click that. And now we have this drop down. We basically have two options because there's two DACs on this board. We're going to do 14.9. There we go. And we'll save that. Now, the next thing we need to do is compile this code into our app. So to do that, we press this Generate Code button here, which is this little pad with a pencil. Now we'll watch over here. This got added into our generated folder, Clock and DAC. So this is what we just built. 
And we don't really have to do anything else with that. So we can get our board ready. And I've just put a resistor on the board here. With this one, it shows you on the back what the pin numbers are. So I've just put the resistor um, here through one of the holes that is for the pin 14.9. Uh, and then the other side of the resistor goes into a ground pin. So we can just clip the scope probe onto that. So now I'm going to plug the board in to a USB plug. And be careful if your board has multiple USBs like this one. You got to get the one that's for programming. And another thing that you'll notice is they actually use another XMC microcontroller as their programming debug system. So you actually, with every demo board, you get uh, two XMC <laughs> microcontrollers, one that does the programming and the debug for the other one. Now, before we can program it, we have to build it. So that's this hammer button here at the top. Next, to send it to the microcontroller, we use this debug button, which looks like a green bug. And now we have to make a configuration. So we double click this J link here and it adds a configuration. You can see it's referencing this ELF file here, which is the built file when we built the project that it made. And this, I think we can leave everything default and just run the debug. Now the debug has started and well, some of the lights have changed on the microcontroller, but it's not actually running the program yet. It's put in a breakpoint automatically. So to continue running, we have to click this play button here. And once we do that, now it should be running and we can actually just stop it and go back. At this point, we should be able to just go back here these are the buttons to go back to the other um, interfaces. So we can just go back here to our original Dave spot. And our microcontroller should be running, so let's go check it out on the scope. So here we are on the bench. We can connect our probe up here to the positive side and the ground. And there we have our signal. So here's a close-up of the connection on the board. And here's the waveform on the oscilloscope. So you can see the 32 steps there. There it is a little bigger. All right, that's it for today. We'll do some more stuff on the XMC in the future. But thanks for watching.